Welcome to Title Talk, a podcast for real estate investors where we cover tips, tricks, and trends in the industry. This podcast is all about providing valuable insights to help you maximize your investment opportunities. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just getting started, Title Talk is the place to stay in the know and get inspired. So grab your headphones, tune in, and let's talk title. Hey. We're live. We're live. What up, Dina? And guess who's back in the house? Yeah, baby. We missed you last time. I'm, I miss you guys all the time. This is my favorite podcast to do because it's uh, it's outside of a lot of the you know normal things that I, I have to present to talk about. You know, I'm always like, today I spent an hour cold calling people, which was a lot of fun. Live, I'm sure. Live. Uh, no pressure. Sometimes I'm <laughs> comping and sometimes I'm doing wholesale hotline with Pace and Brent, which is fun, but we never get into like conversations like this. Right. And so really this is the meat and potatoes of business. This is understanding the complexities of title, the complexities of transactions, the complexity of deal structure. And it's important that people understand this because as you do these deals and as you do more business and as you grow and scale, in your entrepreneurial journey in wholesale real estate, fix and flipping or buy and holding, whatever it is that you're doing, it's uh, you're going to need to pivot. You're going to need to learn new strategies. You're going to need to learn new techniques. And you're going to need to partner with title companies that understand those strategies and techniques, such as wholesaling, creative finance, subject to wraps. And so wiggity, 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 <laughs> Right. And so all of this is super important. But today we have uh, a really special guest that you uh, so do. graciously brought to the table. Dina, tell us a little bit about your friend. Yeah. So, you know, every single title talk is a little unique. And, and really our goal here is to add value and talk about stuff that's not really being talked about um, to give you guys new opportunities. And one of the things that's a new opportunity, a new strategy in the investment space is something that you just actually close a transaction on. And I mm -hmm. definitely want to get into your co-living transaction. I think the timeliness of this is really good. I've been in conversations for the last couple of months with uh, Alan Davis with Homebright in Padsplit, who's going to be our special guest today. And uh, let's welcome Alan to the stage. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hey, Alan, how are you? Great. I hope everybody, can everybody see me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Alan, before you, before you, uh, present i want to give everybody a bit of a background into the my recent co-living venture if you guys haven't watched my instagram lately i have you're missing out by the way yeah you're missing out but i <laughs> I, I purchased a property i actually overpaid for it it's in the maryvale neighborhood of phoenix arizona and i bought it right across the street from student housing at grand canyon university now the reason i did it and the reason i overpaid and you I, aren't usually somebody that likes to overpay i don't overpay I, I don't overpay, but I had to because of the fact of its location. It was like for normally, if that hadn't been right across the street from student housing, normally I would have I would have like really negotiated or I just would have passed on the deal. But I wanted to see like if I if I put myself in a place where I knew there was going to be renters, right, where I knew that there was going to be rental activity, would I be able to create a co-living situation that far exceeded the cash flow that I would get from a midterm long-term or even a short-term rental right so let's quickly define let's dive into what, what are, is right? co-living though too yeah so well, well we start at we start at long-term right yep. long-term long rentals are when you have a property and you put a renter in there for a year two years three years many many people that might be watching this right now live in a long-term rental i lived in a long-term rental and right up until buying this house so i'm not knocking rentals uh renting is a great strategy until you have the financial capacity to buy your own home. Um, Short-term rentals are things that we understand as Airbnbs, VRBO, vacation rentals. And then midterm rentals are like corporate housing, nursing, uh, nursing housing, right? And so that, that has been kind of the rage. But there's this new model called co-living. And the numbers, they are sexy, we talk about things that are sexy on yes. this podcast. Yes. <laughs> the numbers are sexy and I needed to test it. I needed to make sure that that um that there was like that it was real, right? And you love to make title sexy. I love to make I love to make real estate sexy, title sexy, rental sexy, all of it sexy. And so we did the deal. We bought this property. I, it was originally a three bed, two bath. We 
renovated it without changing the footprint and we turned it into a six bed, five bath. And based off of the rental projections, we're looking at a gross rent of $5,600 after debt service and pulling out all of my money that I put in to purchase the property and renovate the property. So once I'm, I'm cashed out, so no dollars in, I'll be cash flowing $2,000 a month. So I just want to hear in the chat, if $2,000 a month right now with no money out of your pocket would be interesting to you, give me a thumbs up in the chat so we can see that you guys are interested in understanding this model because Alan Davis today is going to talk to us about this model. He's developed this brilliant business plan. I had an opportunity to meet him last night and talk a little bit about what he's got going on right now, and it's ingenious. And so I want him to dive into it. But Dina, we need more thumbs. We need yeah. more shares. Yeah. We need more yeah. love. What's happening? Why, why I don't know. Guys, why aren't you guys thumbing us? What's the matter with y'all? Hey, yeah. <laughs> there we I, go. We there, was like, there we go. I love the thumbs. Yeah. Well, Alan has been a great partner of ours for many, many, many years and very loyal. And uh, he always puts us at the forefront of whenever he's about to do something. So he started talking about this probably two years ago <laughs> and asking for meetings with his escrow officer, Kara in Jen Weller on our sales team and kind of telling us about this concept. And we all kind of looked at him like, you think this is going to take off? <laughs> and it totally has. So I'm super excited to have him share with you guys the concept on a national level, on a local level. But before we dive into the nitty gritty, since we don't have enough thumbs up yet, I want us to Find out what's the most interesting thing that's happened with Alan this summer. Okay, Alan, tell us. Well, uh, on uh, the 26th of July, I was in a plane crash. Up and in Orcas Island, Washington, me and another guy. And we were up in a short takeoff and landing plane. We got a fuel line clog, had to make a U-turn, landed in the field, ran out of room, hit a fence, Bump, uh, fell over the fence, and I broke my nose. My face was all bloody. Oh my this God. Was so this is almost uh, less than two months ago. True so story. Dude. We have a plane crash survivor. I had to took an air ambulance to uh, Washington, and just me and this other guy, His he's fine. His plane is toast. But I can tell you with 100% certainty when I say I'm glad to be here, yeah, I am glad to be here, and I'm glad to be here with no. you guys, and God glad, to, with glad you. to be able to participate in something so dynamic. And I how terrified are you, are you, Alan? Because listen, every time I get onto a plane, and I'm on a lot of planes, man. I'm <laughs> I'm I, I I travel 270 days out of a year. Right? Yeah, so that's a lot, right? Yeah, I'm constantly in a plane, and 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 the concept or the idea of it going down never every time i fly i think about it every time i fly i tell everybody that i know and that i love i love them Aww. i just do it before i get on the plane i i always do it um just because right and yeah. and it's terrifying man it like it, when the when the plane goes bumpy bumpy and i'm and i'm <laughs> and, you know so can you tell me tell us a little bit about what that experience was like and like maybe some of the things you were thinking about in the terror of it like i'm hope i hope i'm not like traumatizing you by asking no listen i i am more than happy to talk about it you guys because i am it was not my time hmm. it was not my time and i am supposed to be here and so what this did to me the it was the whole thing took about 58 seconds it was literally oh my gosh. when we had to do a U-turn and land in a field with the clogged fuel line. And the, the pilot, my friend Steve, handled it flawlessly, frankly. Um, but, you know, what, what it's done for me, just in a nutshell, is I'm thinking, what do I need to do in my life to find my purpose? Mm. What is my purpose? Why am I here? Really to help define that. I was thinking about this stuff. Uh, for a long time, but what what is my purpose and what's my drive and what's my passion, and how how can I make a difference? And so it all happened so fast. I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even see my life pass before my eyes. But my whole goal, and I wrote a whole I wrote a whole poem about this because I'm corny. 
Hello, Sappy. I'm corny. I, I, I like haikus. I like poetry. I, I'm Myers in poetry, by the way. Okay. In, 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 oh, in, I never knew that. Yeah. Well, we will. We I will share it with you, and I can share the the whole presentation with anybody who is interested. But I wrote a poem called Stronger. Mm -hmm. Would you read it to us right now? You, okay. Okay. It's kind of long. That's so okay. how long is it? Oh, it, it's it's a little long, but but essentially to to. Uh, have it in a nutshell, it, it's really basically, I mean, understand, I'm understand. i thankful for everything in life. Okay. Um, I am, I realize that death is part of life. Amen. I realize that I have an opportunity, one opportunity to make the best life that I can while my soul is still on this planet and that I don't see failure as failure or anything of that sort. I literally see another opportunity to be stronger. That's mm. that's it in a nutshell. So I can share it another time, but give us some claps, guys. <laughs> we need to see some claps in the chat here because wow. this is like I got chills right now. I don't know about you, but that's so, so powerful. you know, this was part of I'm a passionate guy. Um, and this was part of my passion because what we're talking about today, we call it co-living. I I call it workforce housing, right? But the whatever we call it. There is a housing crisis and people need our help. Yep. We are, we are in a position with our minds and our spirits and everything to do good for the universe and do good for our fellow people. And what we're going to talk about is, is not only doing good, but doing well at the same time. How do we mm. do good and do well together? So, Alan, let's talk a little bit about the housing housing crisis, because I agree with you. We're in a housing crisis. And, and if you don't believe we're in a housing crisis, go to your local downtown. I don't care where you're watching this from right now. Go to your downtown. Go look up where the tent city is in your in your in your city. There yeah. is a tent city in your city. It doesn't matter where you live in America. There's rampant homelessness right now yes. all across the country. Yes. And it's and it's and it's 9800 in Maricopa County It is heartbreaking. And for every two that exit i'm sorry every two that enter one exits so do the math on that yeah it's it's i mean you can't even end the homeless problem if it's a one to one and no. we're a one to two it's it's one to two and then on top of that right on top of that it's affordability is just like it's gone it's it's gone to crap rents are skyrocketing yep. and then and then and you know when you I, the reason why i have this this perspective is i traveled through europe with my family over the summer that's why i wasn't on a couple of these title talks with you guys and i saw the way that other countries live i saw how they live in europe it's co-living yeah it's co-living so yeah. so when you've got high density small areas skyrocketing inflation skyrocketting uh, expenses, affordability, sky, affordability is down. When you have these situations, co-living becomes the solution. It does. Yeah. Generational living becomes the solution. Co-living becomes the solution. And so I think that Alan, two years ago, you were prophetic in your, Oh, we kind of thought he was whack a well, little yeah. bit. Like well, we were yeah. like, really, really well, people they, are going to live they say together. About every person who's <laughs> forward thinking, every, every person who has an idea that is innovative, and forward thinking, they they say is crazy until you become impressive and genius, right? So you're you're crazy yesterday, today you're a genius, tomorrow you're gonna you're you're gonna be saving people, right? So, yeah. so talk to us a little bit about what you have going on, brother. Okay, excellent. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my PowerPoint slides. We're gonna try this. We have never done a share screen on the podcast before, so guys, bear with us for a moment. So, so I won't be able to see you guys, but there's there's a few slides, and my goal here is not to get through all the slides because I let everybody know that we have links for this presentation. I can send you the whole presentation. The goal is to have a complete, well-rounded conversation about what is the crisis and what do we do as human beings to do good and do well to help solve this crisis. Love it. Okay, cool. So let me let me pop over here to this presentation. Uh, I hope everybody can see this. Yeah, you. We, oh, yeah, we're good. It's perfect. There we go. Okay, so so this is what we're talking about, and this is really a, our simple why. Everybody has to have a why in life, and this is our why about doing good and doing well. And this is literally a conversation starter. I really want to uh, honor Jamil because Jamil, I I 
I'm new in meeting you, but I see the empire that you have put together. And by the way, that picture, um, you look different than the picture now. <laughs> you're, you're much thinner than, than this picture is. Yeah, but I'm missing a goiter. <laughs> I don't so, even know what a goiter is. It's when you uh, have hyperthyroidism and your neck explodes. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm trying to find another picture, but the, the, reason, the reason I put this up here, Jamil, is this, is just to acknowledge you, and I, I'm not trying to be brown nosy, but and your greatness and how you are making a difference in the life of so many people with all these different things. But the Thank biggest you. thing that I see is about mindset. And when you're talking mm -hmm. about upholding the values of integrity, just awesome. He um, met you for the first time yesterday, by the way, and he's captured this by like watching you online. Yeah. In the community, which I think is spot on. I've seen your, your videos. And, and again, I am so honored to be a part of, of this and create something together. So real, real quick about mindset and anybody interrupt me at any time. So I, there's a, there's a great group called landmark education if anybody's ever heard of it. But Absolutely. They're fantastic, by the way. Fantastic. And I'm a graduate of Landmark. And there's a famous saying is, we don't know what we don't know. And we don't even know we don't know it. <laughs> right? We don't know what we don't know. We don't even know we don't know it. And so we all of us have these blind spots into our life. And so together, what we're hoping is that you are a master at, at so many different creative things from a uh, real estate standpoint. What we're looking to do is have open people's minds to create a long term, I say handsomely cash flowing passive investment model. So I kind of look at the at this as a kind of a slow dime per perhaps versus a fast nickel. OK, so just a tad about me, um, I spent a lot, 22 years in corporate America, sold almost a billion dollars worth of real estate here. Wow. In 2008, 2012, I had about 470 houses at auction with Canadians. Go Canada. Uh, I'm not Canadian, but I, his I, 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 I know you are, Jamil. He's I'm, got the flag. Uh, I'm repping, I'm repping uh, Canada today. I've got my beaver on my on my. <laughs> Um, I've been investing since 2002. I teach classes in investing and I have put together a one-stop shop business model. These are the properties that I've purchased or bought around the Phoenix metro area. And I, got some credibility folks. And, yes. and, and this is, this is just something that's near and dear to my heart. I'm not any better than anybody else ever. We're all humans. These are some skills that I have that I look forward to sharing with my fellow humans. Okay. Um, so just kind of getting into the into this, and again, please please interrupt me if you need. We have a lot, lack of supply, and it's caused by a lack of access. And if we look at the national picture, and this is part of a big study, the the Arizona ranks number eighteen in the nation on being able to afford a house based on our wages. And at the end of the day, this is this is a, a study from the National Low Income uh, Pop, uh, Housing Coalition. Look at this, this stat here. No state or metropolitan county can any full-time minimum wage worker, I'm assuming 12 to $15 an hour, afford a modest two-bedroom rental. And these workers cannot afford a one-bedroom apartment in 91% of U.S. counties. Now, I know that some of the people we're talking to are, are across the country, Yahoo. The, and we can get more specific. We can get a whole... Um, study for you. If you want, you can click on this link below and we'll be more than happy to get you this whole study. But yeah, the, drop a, drop a comment in there, guys. Tell us where you're from. We want to know today. $1,000 a year is low income is uh, Alan. Do you have a stat? I think Dennis is right, but what's your stat on, on what, what constitutes low income? Well, we're, we're the workforce housing model and again, before I before I move on, I, I appreciate all the recognition you guys, but I have to do a shout out to Pad Split um, because Pad Split, we're going to be talking about them later, but they are the national leader in workforce housing, co living, and we're going to be talking about them later. But they're the ones who actually inspired me, okay. and I helped create a business model. I'm around a big fan of Pad Split, so I'm you know yeah. of course. I, I and think Alice, I think, awesome. is watching. I saw him yeah, get Alice, Alice on the call. Hi, Alice. Good. Um, we have a few other friends on as well, but um, it, we're looking at 15 to $30 an hour, mainly the kind of the working poor, if you will. Got it. Yeah. Now, so to get some more. We're 15, 
15 to $30 an hour is a working poor. It is. Look yeah. at that, guys. Well, it is. I mean, like, we, we go down to St. Vincent de Paul and we serve dinner. It's for the families of the working poor because they can afford kind of to live, but they can't afford My, extras like food. When I worked food. at Taco Bell, I made five thirty five an hour. <laughs> there, were, there were people who worked with me at Taco Bell who were, who were supporting households at $8 yeah. an hour. Yeah. So, so seven. We're, we are, we are, I think, again, the way I'm approaching life is I'm, I'm blessed. I've, I've done well and it's, and I want to give back. This is part yeah. of my heart and we'll talk about this. Um, this uh, foundation for senior living that has a lot of seniors that they, that they uh, house. There's 270,000 houses that are short. The, the median home price is up by 60%. There's a three and a half to 4% difference in mortgage rates between what is people have and now. There's a wage inflation disparity. There's a depleted housing stock. All these factors come together, but to alleviate the crisis, we need to increase supply. And we ultimately, we need to create non-traditional forms of housing. This is part of the solution, you guys. And this is one of the reasons I'm so excited, not just to talk about this in the Phoenix metro area, but to uh, through um, Jamil's leadership, to start having this conversation across the country. And you okay. have never had this conversation in your community yet before today, correct? No, I've been I, I literally just dipping my toes. Yeah. In, because, you know, I, Rahima and I have been building low income housing in, in Arizona for the last two years. And we do it. We and we sell under market value like we do it as a as a as a service, as a service. Right. Like we, our profits are very low. Uh, we basically keep the we keep the guys working. We make a little bit of money. Basically, what we would make if we'd put our money in a in a like a interest bearing account, right? Yeah. We we try to make the we we leave the profits in the property so that whoever buys it, they can get a great deal. Which uh, is like amazing. A, a family can afford it, right? And so, like we do that because we we are fortunate. We're blessed to be able to do it. But, but you also like highest and best use of the asset. 100%. Which that is, falls into that category. Absolutely. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I wanted to, to get through some of these numbers, if you yeah. will, because I, I have a lot yeah. of slides. And again, I don't want to get to the slides, but this, no, 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 let's go. this is a really scary slide here. Okay. Now, I, I remember I bought 470 houses at auction and I checked this number and right now, there's 628 house places with a notice of default, mm. right? And, so and look at 2021. We had 99 homes go to auction for the entire year. Yeah, and, and this right now, this is this is a coming storm, you guys. And when we talk about the economy, this is a chance to localize it. And I'm sure there's there's other pain across the country. But this is a couple slides to kind of dimensionalize it. And if anybody wants to get this list. They can click on that link below. So and who's well, calling the NODs right now? Because these people need help. These are all NODs, you guys. And so there's 781. This is across everything. And this is literally right from the, from the tax records. And we can get that. But these are 781 people who've stopped making their payments. And the bank ran out of patience. And they're, you know, they're possibly going to be going into hard luck. So, yeah. so what is really important here it, it, from what my perspective and bringing this up is that this is see this area here when i bought the 470 houses from 2008 this was the epicenter because this is the area where people do not have that disposable income and they're either going to eat or gonna, they're going to make their mortgage payment and and for whoever who's saying bubble here guys 781 units doesn't constitute a bubble OK, no. what it does is it's like that inventory is going to get absorbed in, in a minute. What right. the, what the real question is, where are they going to go? Yep. Yes, exactly, Jamil. So so that's where I had some observations about this. OK, the vast majority of these households have equity. This is different from 2008 when everything was a yep. short bill, everything was undervalued. Right. And then the second piece is these people have received their notice of default, so their credit is compromised. So our action item as a group, our, our charge, our goal, our mission, in my opinion, the opportunity is for us to create a win-win scenario for these households to use creative financing and our creative acquisition strategy. So I'm sure that these are all things you've taught many, many times, Shamil, and you mentor 
this is a, a chance for everybody who's listening to make a difference to their community by coming up with ways to help these people because where are they going to go? I love Dennis's question. What can I do to help? Well, Dennis, good on you. We're going to talk about that, okay? So I'm explaining a little bit, of, and you can click on this link here. Um, I want to just do, do a shout out for um, for Fidelity because oh. I got this list, and I'm just showing everybody my my email. <laughs> September 18th, I emailed Jen, and by September 19th, I got the list. There was a 24 hour turnaround time, and Jamil, at your uh, meetup last night, you said 10 ways to use a title company. Nailed. To make another quarter million dollars a year that's like right <laughs> in your wheelhouse and right under your nose that you don't even know about. And this is a skip trace file. I immediately got it. I have it. I can start making phone calls. And what I want to share with everybody is that is that if somebody wants this information, I'll share it. It's not mine. It belongs to Maricopa County. And if somebody, if we can make the difference for one person, that's a start. When I bought the 470 houses, we kept a lot of people in their house mm -hmm. and they ended up repairing their credit and we got it back. But I, I see uh, there, there's a lot going on now. Um, so we just have to be in the moment and do what we can. Okay. So how do we do good and do well? Well, we create non-traditional forms of housing. And the, the, the fir first part, and Dennis, you know, wherever you are, good on you. We care enough to Dennis collaborate and, and use our creative skills to become part of the solution. Okay. So I want to give you a, a success story with my clients, Jordan and Alex, who just moved from New York. Okay. He's a VA buyer. He makes $26 an hour at a local company called HelloFresh. Yeah, I order that all the time. I just got a delivery from them about an hour ago. It's awesome. Look at this guy. He's cut. This is his wife. Uh, he, I'm so he's not fat. Otherwise, I would have started canceling my order. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is a house in Buckeye. It's a, a brand new shiny penny, 1,850 street, you know, three, three bathrooms, four, four bedroom. They locked him in. This builder locked him in at 4.875% on a 30-year fixed. The builder contributed $22,000 for the rate buy-down, okay? This is creating affordable housing. Yes. And, and the Century Homes is right here in Scottsdale where I live. They're a class operation. They put together a great house. But kudos to them because Alex and uh, Jordan would have been out of luck uh, as first-time buyers to buy a resale. Okay, so I, I'm I a mean, very 400,000 is like below our median sales price in Maricopa right. County for sure. And that interest rate doesn't exist today. So, no, I they, mean, they, they bought yeah. it down. So, so I'm bringing this up. I'm a very positive person because, you know, that's just me. Right now, here's, here's what a lot of people are doing for what they think are affordable living. So, with this build to rent, raise hands if you're familiar with the build to rent. We're, we lead the nation in these build to rent houses. Yep. And I actually call them mushroom homes. Why? Okay. Because. <laughs> what, do they, what do they do? Are they eating mushrooms? Are they growing mushrooms? What are they oh. doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a house. It's 1,236 square feet, and we're seeing a pop up all over the Phoenix metro area and the nation. Again, we lead the nation in this, and these houses are renting for between $23.28 and $55.09 a month. This is not affordable housing. It's not. So you, you've got to be on mushrooms to be able to think <laughs> that that's a, a, a good price or what? <laughs> You're not going to call some mushroom houses. What, what I'm saying is that, is that the, market, if the market is adjusting. The builders are adjusting to get their cash flow. But this really is not affordable housing. Here's another example. There's all these. I, I think some of these apartments going up are kind of ugly. And they're all over the Phoenix metro area. And that's an, these are one bedrooms. But why are they mushroom houses? Yeah, I still don't get it. Like, yeah, well, the mushroom, the mushroom houses are these because there's four. They're brown? Different. Yeah, this is. This they're is popping a, up a, everywhere. A, oh, they're like weeds. Yeah, well, the reason is, is they're putting 12 to 14 on per acre, you guys. Oh. And if you, if, clusters, if anybody. Clusters. If you ever see how mushroom, mushroom grow, fields. They grow in clusters. There, yep. There's yeah. no garages. It's 12 to 14 an acre and they're, they're packing them in. So that's why I call them like a bunch of mushrooms growing. Uh, <laughs> that makes, but, that makes but a little bit more sense. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so this is, like the re- though too. this is a reaction to the market. And some people think that this is affordable housing. Frankly, it's not, in my opinion. They're growing uh, everywhere, but uh, they're all over the valley. And if you're if for the locals here, if you go off of the Camelback down the 101 corridor uh, near uh, the uh, State Farm Stadium and specifically at Camelback in the 101, you'll see a, a community. They're growing everywhere. We're, we lead the nation in this, and this is this is helping the builders. It's not helping the workforce uh, housing people. Yep. Yep. These are the these are the uh, apartments going in that are new apartments, and, and a lot of developers are getting you know small business loans and all this stuff to build these places. These are are plentiful, but they're still not affordable. Um, we talk about VRBO. Some people think the VRBO is is the answer. Airbnb. We did $7.6 billion last year for Airbnb, and they contributed $650 million to the taxes raised in Arizona. And if we look at where these are at, Scottsdale, Phoenix, Mesa, Peoria, Gilbert, I, I sold a lot not of- not in affordable areas. You don't go on vacation to Maryville and buy it <laughs> and go risk. I'm sorry, but you don't go get an Airbnb in Maryville. You get an Airbnb in Scottsdale. That's what happens. I think the way that the reason Glendale looked like that is probably for the Super Bowl. Sports. The sports. Super Bowl. <laughs> sports. Over right. there. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I'm a firm believer in this model. And if the, the uh, air, this is a disruptor. And I actually think that Pat Split in this co, co uh, uh, this workforce housing is a disruptor as well. That's going to be here to stay. But this works because the economic economics of it works. Even if a house is thirty thousand dollars a month, with I do have some clients with rentals, it's only a thousand dollars a night to sleep twelve during the winter. It makes sense, but mm-hmm. it's not affordable housing. Okay, so let's transition then into what three options are. Okay, are with with workforce housing we have a really clear mission and again does anybody have any questions or you guys want to make no, any no, comments? no no you're good keep yeah, going yeah. so our mission is to create unique high quality housing and they're essentially boarding homes okay for low wage earning individuals throughout the phoenix metro area and i extend this to those mm-hmm. living across the country yeah because okay. you guys are in like 29 markets already right oh, or 22 20, 25 25 okay, markets 25. And so, so we, people are not getting past the typical multifamily barriers to entry. So those apartments, you got three months of income, you have heavy security deposits, you've got massive credit scores, you've got all sorts of barriers to entry. Now, what this is now talking about is pad split. Okay. And again, I, 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 Ellis is on the call and I just want to reach out to Ellis and say thank you because I, uh, Atticus LeBlanc is the CEO of pad split. And it's a it's a great company, and it's taking yeah, hold. One hundred percent. I've had I've had uh, numerous opportunities to talk to Pace Morby, who is a friend of Atticus's, and and, yep. and you know, I I truly believe that that what Pad Split is doing right now is uh, as disruptive as OfferPad and Open Door is. Yep was I, to, uh, buying and selling five years homes. ago. Six I years think ago. I think what Pad Split is doing right now is is, is as disruptive as that to the rental industry one in a positive way way. in a positive way exactly exactly so 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 this is um you know it started in atlanta and that's where atticus has has the home and a little known uh, kind of a small fact is that mark cuban is actually an investor in this company love mark cuban for those who watch shark Shark tank Tank. so pat's what is currently in about 25 cities and they're over seven thousand rooms Okay, so these are these are markets that are either in or are going into. All right. So, again, if people want to click on the link, they can get more information. Now, what what did I do to address this? Because I like uh, like uh, Denny, who's on the call or um, I said, well, we have a crisis. What do we do about this? Mm. So what I did is that I created a, a I'm a I'm a I'm an investor for many years. I teach classes in passive investing. And I created a business model for somebody if they want to do pad split, if they want to create a co co living model, we have it all locked and loaded. So he basically created a turnkey system for anybody that wants to do this anywhere in the country. Anywhere in the country. Wow. So, so this is you know what I created in Arizona. We got property management. We have uh, K10 construction. Of course, here's Fidelity National Title. 
I'm so telling I, you, we were his first call. And I was like, this seems kind of whack. Like, you're going to live with somebody that's a perfect stranger. And then, then I was like, but I get in the car with a perfect stranger every time I take an Uber. Right. So maybe that's like not such a wild idea. Yeah. So so this is what this is where I took this on, out, not only out of uh, uh, knowing that it's a disruptor and really knowing that it's it's a wave of the future, but knowing that it can it can match with my values, which is a power team essentially. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the yeah. power team. So yep. now, with this said, so this is what is happening in Phoenix. So this is the pad split. Yeah, bring it up. Yeah, let's see it. In Phoenix right now as we speak, okay? So there's over 100 rooms across 16 homes, and we just launched in March. We're at about 95% occupancy. 95% occupancy. Yep. Who can say that about their rental portfolio? I, I spoke with Ellis this morning, and Ellis, you can, you can confirm this, but we're at about 95% occupancy, and there's another 200 rooms coming in about the next 60 days. So just to give you an idea, I have a beautiful Airbnb in one of the most incredible neighborhoods in Phoenix. Swimming pool, half an acre lot, four bed, four bath, 4,000 square foot. Party house. Yeah, it's a great place. 60% occupancy. Yeah. Yep. So we're, we're going we're gonna to get to location, some location, location. I got, I, I got all of it, but I'm at 60%. Sixty hmm. percent for a short-term rental is is pretty good, Jamil. Actually, <laughs> but you know, it, it, that's a that's a different model. So again, back back to this affordable thing. What are we going to do? This is one person, one room. All utility pays. All utilities paid for. These are clean houses. Um, there there's no guests. There's no smoking. And one of the things that Pad Split does that I think is fantastic is they pay. Uh, for telehealth for the members, they call the tenants members. They have health care. It's like a club. They, they're, it's they're, a club. Yeah, they have health care. So, so this is this fifteen to thirty dollar an hour person who may be moved in from another area. They can't afford regular rentals at all, and this is giving people an option. So this That's is amazing. All the time, you guys. Okay. Uh, and and again, hats off to Pat Split and Ellis. This is the fastest. They just updated the numbers because they've changed since your call with him this afternoon, and those are now on the screen. So I love that. Thank you, oh, Ellis. Fa fantastic. Thank you, Ellis. So so basically, this is Phoenix. Now, this is Kansas City. Okay, so they launched Kansas City just a couple months ago, and Kansas City is also growing. So the reason I bring this up, and again, this is twenty five markets. If you're listening on this call. And, and again, you're part of the thinking, what can I do? Padsplit can be coming to your city. They have to do the analysis and, and see what the absorption is going to be and all this. But you can be a part of the solution wherever you are, folks, well, and, wherever you are. And Jamil teaches you go where it works, too. So yeah. I actually think, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but there's markets it's working, 25 of them. That's something to Listen, consider. You <laughs> You play where there's traffic so you can get hit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know, you're talking about an accident, Jamil, and it's a little close to home, but. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> so, so let's get, let's get there was more no traffic in the air that day, though. Uh, let's get more specific, okay? Now, so you have option one. If somebody wants to invest in, in, in pad split, you can convert existing rentals, which are underperforming. And this is my commercial for Ben Stewart, 17 time world kickboxing champion. Oh, he yeah. 19, a home and native land. Um, <laughs> but he, he bought 19 homes at, at auction in 2010 through me, about an average price of 35,000. Wow. He was making, they're mostly in Maryvale. He's making about twelve hundred fifty bucks a home, or about sixty two hundred bucks on his portfolio. He That's took crazy. out an eight hundred thousand dollar hard money loan, approximately, okay, to completely redesign each home. And the, he has the remaining five homes to be converted. And currently, of what he has, ninety five percent of them are rented. Hmm. Now his his at 100 percent occupancy, which we will hopefully get to 95 percent when the five houses are rented, he'll be making about seventy five hundred dollars a month 
gross times five or about $37,000 a month. So if you look at that beta between 6250 a month and $37,000 <laughs> a month, this is like right up the alley of Jamil and how you talk about, hey, McFly, right? What are we doing here? Let's let's make some money. And so, so this is an example. I just took a shot of the two houses of what they look like. This is right off of Zillow. This is a house on Flower. This is a house on 32nd, right near GCU, right near you. Okay. And there's another one in Medlock. So what happened to the houses? This is 32nd Street. This house was, I, I, this is one of the very first houses I bought. Who renovated them? K10 Construction. Great, great partner. Is okay? that your vendor? Is it Pazplus vendor? Well, Pazplus uh, recommended him to me. And then we, we, we went full in because Ben said, I'm doing five houses. I'm going to take out 800K. And I'm getting this done. And literally this morning, I was at the last house on Medlock that's going to go live next week. Awesome. But I wanted to show you some actual examples. So this is an 8-4. It's literally spitting distance from GCU. Mm -hmm. And this is the big kitchen. They completely gutted this house. And it's an 8-4 and 100% occupied. What are they getting for that one? He's, he's, he's averaging about 7,500, 8,000 8, a month. This is one on Desert Cove, which is uh, right near uh, 32nd Avenue and um, Cactus. That, you know, these are total gut jobs. And so that's where the Spencer came in and did the architectural designs and finished it soup to nuts and is working with me and with Patty at Provident Partners to get these things converted. This is the- so We had a good question too on this. Like people are yeah. curious, like what kind of houses do they look for that make sense in this mm, model? Yeah. Right. Yes. And uh, I know you guys can speak to this at a very high level. So so I, I have a slide uh, here in, in a minute, but I'll answer this. According to Atticus, okay, according to Atticus, the CEO, he said, do an eight bedroom, three bath or go home. Because if you have three baths as a minimum and you can get eight bedrooms out of it, that's when you're really getting that multiple. So. So wait, they're looking for something that has eight bedrooms? Because that's nope. kind of hard to find. Nope. We're looking for a, we're looking for a, it. Okay. a four, a four three, perhaps. Okay. That you turn into an eight three. Yeah. So all the living areas go. So the only common area is the kitchen. And you can see that these are not slums. These are places that have pride of ownership that people are going to be are are happy to be at. Yeah. Uh, we've had really good uh, re retention of people so far. What about laundry rooms? You got laundry rooms in there? We have laundry each on Ben's houses. Each room has its own refrigerator. Each room is uh, at least eight by 10. It has to have ingress and egress. Um, you Do have, you have the, like locks on all the doors and like yeah, pads? Yeah, little pad locks lamps. on each of yeah. Each door has its own electronic lock. It's very mm -hmm. secure. But if you have eight bedrooms, um, then you're, and then some of these actually are en suite, like on Desert Cove. So Desert Cove, there was a, a, a room that's renting for uh, $375 per week. That's ben nice. was getting about that uh, for the whole house before. And that's the master with its own bathroom. So so that's uh, so this is, is, is happening and it's realistic. So these are houses. Yeah. I love Nas. She was just like me. I'm like, how the freak can people live yeah. together? So, like well, so Nas, Nas says people are crazy. So, and, and that not, not She's all right, people are, but, but I some mean, people are yeah. crazy. And so how are we screening? Right. Because let, let's just, let's just unpack it for a second. Right. Cause I did student housing at my place across from GCU and I'm not expecting mental illness or like, you know, situational problems or whatever. I'm expecting students, but the people who don't have the stability of a home, and I'm not saying that there's, it's going to be crazy people. It's, I'm just saying that if there's no stability of the home, there's going to be a portion of folks, a small portion of folks that have some substance abuse, mental illness. How are we screening against that? Or, or what's such, a, such a good question. I mean, interrupt you. So this is where Pad Split works in conjunction with Provident Partners, the property management company, okay, that managed my investment properties for 20 years, okay? So pad split does the background screening of these people. Pad split, mm. think about pad split is like an Airbnb, VRBO. They're attracting the people. They're doing the background check. 
Okay. And then Patty works in hand, hand in hand with them to get them into the property just to check them out and make sure they're good. Mm. So, so there's a, I think what the, the learning so far, because if we, we wouldn't have been able to have this conversation in February of this year, because no. we didn't have anything going. Now it's taking off, right? So what we're finding is that people are, you have different age levels. The, when some of the average people that are staying in pads across the country are, you know, the, the avatar is a single 40 year old man, but you also have a, a fairly really? high. Me? Really? Yeah. Well, you're yeah. not single. <laughs> well, if I kicked back, yes. And if she kicked me out, I'd be, I'd be the dude, right? <laughs> well, put, like only dudes in one house. Like, do no. you separate it? Is it dudes and chicks? Like, if well, this is a single 40 year old no. dudes, do you pair but, with 25 year olds? Well, you know, again, we, we, we have to. <laughs> We have to be cognizant of fair housing, right? But you have men and women. But living do you? I mean, this is kind of a different model. It is, but but, but again, it, it's it's a fair housing model open to everybody. And so this this Thirty Second Street is, is right down the street. So it's like you have a dating day, service too. What, what we're finding, what we're finding, to mean to cut you off, is that people are happy. People oh. are 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 thankful that they have an option, and I think that. You know, they say necessity yeah. is the mother of invention. People are happy that they have an option. That is no, why the only option is a hotel. Mm. Well, even hotels, if you look at extended stay America, those are, you know, $75 a night. Yep. If, if you take, if you, if you take these properties, these are 30, $35 a night, people can pay by the week. And so pad split does all uh, collects all the money they, it's all an app. They're actually advertising on buses now. They advertise on different websites. And so basically they're handling that part. So this is part of what I'm going to be talking about is that this is a team effort. This isn't necessarily something somebody can go out and literally do on their own. This It's going to well, take no, it's turnkey and actually you guys fix all the problems too. So when you're talking about tenants right. and getting along, they go in there and fix it. So as an investor, you don't get the headaches from the landlord calls. Right. right. So when, when, uh, Dario or Dario said, um, sounds like a halfway house. Well, Dario, um, halfway houses, there's, there's, those are criminals. These are, these are, you know, working professionals. Working professionals. It's a different dem demographic. Not that I have anything against criminals or halfway houses or whatever, just do your thing. But this is a different situation. I'm sure halfway houses are also lucrative, but that's not the business model we're talking about. We are looking at, I, I don't know the exact number, but I think uh, like the, the numbers are staggering on how many people are in this level of income. And so mm -hmm. what, what I can tell you with our experience so far is that people are grateful and they're getting along. Um, I was with Patty Hatton from Provident Partners this morning at Ben's house on Medlock. She said that her and her husband had to go and unclog a, a toilet. One of the members you know, was inconsiderate and left a you know what in the toilet. <laughs> so they, they had to take care of that. So as an investor, do you want to deal with that? No. <laughs> no. No. So so th this is where uh for eight percent, and I'll get into some numbers in a minute, eight percent, the provident will take care of all this stuff. Okay. So uh so this is option one, which is to convert, and these are beautiful examples from a man, my man. World champion Ben Stewart. Now, this is option two, okay. And this is where I, I get involved in a more in a, in a more direct way because I'm a broker, I'm a realtor, and I can buy these houses whether we're going to do them uh, via the wholesale technique or whether we're going to do them retail. It doesn't matter because we can get these houses. So this is option two. So for my clients, Brent and Jose, this is on 150. Well, actually how this started. So let's go to the basics, right? When you first identified that you wanted to go after this, we started with the data and we did a bunch of research on finding properties that were outside of HOAs that were close to hospitals or close to schools yep. that might fit into this model. Can, can I, can I just throw a monkey wrench into this conversation right now? Please. I love monkeys. I love monkeys. <laughs> My look. So Airbnb comes VRBO, VRBO comes, right? And all of a sudden, now we've got legislation in Atlanta that says no more vacation rentals. I, I have a beach house in L.A. I can't rent out on. I can't do VRBO or Airbnb on my beach house. It's empty unless I'm staying there. Why? Because I'm not because Air, because L.A. County decided to 
make it illegal. Let me ask you this, zoning, right? Zoning is going to become an issue, right? So they, we're not, we're, so not, com we're, not, we're not complying with zoning right now, right? Because we've got multiple families. It's like basically multifamily and single family. How are we scooting around zoning? How are we, how are we dealing with this legality issue? And, and will it turn into something that people today invest in? And then, you know, like for instance, my friend Pace, right? He bought this gorgeous mansion in Atlanta, Georgia, that was originally uh, Airbnb. When they banned Airbnb, he said, they said uh, no. So now he's turned it into nursing houses uh, and, and he's doing well with it. But like, I'm just wondering, will, will zoning become a thing or will this become like a problem? Will the neighbor start saying, yo, dude, I got 13 people living next door. What's happening over here? Jamil, I, I want to acknowledge you for as, asking that perfect question, and and to be to be very candid with you, when we, this is these are the before pictures of this house, before we started construction, we went to the city of Phoenix on another issue, and we talked about the zoning, and they they said that any time you have more than six unrelated people, more than six unrelated people in a home in a residential neighborhood, it is classified as a boarding house. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, the, a boarding house can only be on commercial land, mm. which is why I actually have an option three that I'm going to discuss in a minute. Wow. But, and this is City but, of Phoenix only, so it's going to vary. You know, City of Phoenix, they're all kind of in the same. So, so the solution here, okay, is that Pad Split. I went to Charles, who uh, at, who's the general counsel at Pad Split, and he's works. He he knows the general counsel at. Um, Airbnb. And from a legal standpoint, it is very, very, very rare that there is a zoning infraction. What is more common is that you have noise, trash, landscaping, and parking. Mm. And, and what, what the, the way to approach it is that, is that uh, if you take care of those it's things- property management. The, the, right, exactly. If you take care of those things, the chances of you getting a quote unquote zoning violation are almost non-existent. Right. You get now, a point split involved and they're handling the, the property management of it. Then now you don't have to deal with any of the nuisance situations. Right. So so here's here's what, what we did is we got talked to Charles and we said, Charles, what do we do? Because this is before we started construction. These are the before pictures. And he, he wrote something into the pad split host contract. It's a little addendum saying that pad split will indemnify the host if there is a zoning issue. Whoa. Now, That's a big deal. Holy it, moly. So this, is, this is you guys. This is where my passion is. And maybe some people think I'm a pain in the behind, but I'm an investor. I represent investors. And you asked an extremely valid question. Wow. So we'll talk you about, about it too. You talk about stuff that makes you like uh, I not I sleep at I, night. I, I, listen, I ask the real questions. I, I mean, you asking? Gonna... It's a great question. So yeah. basically, what what we what we're what we're doing is we have amended the contract, and so Pad Split is also working with Atlanta and all that. There is some. There's a lot of legal um, changes. If you look in California, they're allowing zoning changes to allow more housing to be built to address affordable housing. So while that may happen sometime soon, in the meantime, that if you operate a good house and it's well-maintained and it's, it's the chances of something like that happening are very, very slim. Now you need to get permits for construction and all that stuff. So that's a different topic, but we handled that and pad split to their credit was very, um, supportive and very understanding, and they've been down that road. That road. So we're wow. not creating this business model new because we're going on the shoulders of what Pad Split has already been doing since 2018. Right. What we're doing now is we have this overlay in this template in the Phoenix metro area, and that's where my expertise and my team uh, comes in because we we know what to uh, we know what to avoid. Um, so at the end of the day, you're taking this house and look at this house now. Two fridges. Yes. That's a lot of food for people that like yes. maybe are traveling. Damn, look at all those. Look at all those pantries. Right. So, so it, pantries. does this look like halfway housing? Does this look like slum housing? Does this no. look like. So this, when you mentioned earlier in the call, Jamil, 
higher and better use. Mm-hmm. I fundamentally believe that this is not only a higher and better use, but this is is uh, working in with doing good and doing well. And so there are at nine rooms occupied on this property right now, and people have a really comfortable place. It's a quarter acre. I call this ethical and compassionate use, to be honest. Like I think this is how we this is how we reevaluate the situation that we're dealing with with respect to this housing crisis. And we put people that can't afford to live in a home that looks like this and they pay a couple hundred dollars a week to live there. Like, give me a break. And it's also is, cash flowing so much more like, positively. You raise and look, it's good for the investor because look, if I own this house, right. And I'm getting the cash flow, I'm, I'm with it. If I'm, a, if I'm a resident living in this house and this is what I get to walk into, this is my living room. This is, this is my kitchen. Sorry. This is my area that my common area. I got the stainless steel appliances. I got these gorgeous you know, shaker cabinets, granite countertops, all the things. I feel better. I'm living better. I'm elevated mm-hmm. energetically. Now I can go out there and do something to my life for my hey, life. Jamil, bingo. Because what, what the word I think about that comes into my mind so often is a word called stabilization. Amen. Okay. Because people, listen, life is tough. And there are so many people that are less fortunate. But if somebody moves out of the quote unquote inner city and gets a job at the Home Depot or at, you know, uh, McDonald's that's paying, you know, $20 an hour now uh, or at uh, wherever, right? They can improve their life. They can stabilize. And then ultimately what we where I will be involved is we can get these people out of these houses into a longer term rental. Then ultimately they're going to build their credit. Uh, Pat split reports to credit agencies positively. Yeah, positively rent. And, and then they can maybe buy their house it one day. So one of the videos we have that Pat split has is a member who went through that exact thing. He was down on his luck. He got into the property. He stabilized, and now he actually is a host for Pad Split. That's right? awesome. It's just it's just like the it's just like when I was buying the foreclosure houses, and we were able to keep people in, and they can buy their house back. So. Again, these are things, in my opinion, when people come to me uh, and want to invest and they say, well, do I do long term, short term, multifamily, whatever? I think that this is the best way to, to play, put so money. Let's cut to that because yeah. you know, we're, we yeah, got, we're we close to time. On, OK, on, I, I want to take a minute and go over can, option three and work with you. Yeah, okay, perfect. So I want to go through option three real quick. And this was Spencer. We came up with an option to build um, houses, okay? And what we would do is each, this is going to be a 12-12. So for some of the investors, for some of the team members on, on the call, th- what this is is the basics of building a workforce housing development, hmm. okay? We need C2 commercial land, but this is one level uh, there, there's a bunch of different iterations of this, but we can build this two stories and there could be a 120 unit development. Can you reconvert all this garbage commercial that's been sitting there with office vacant. that's not working right now that's vacant? Can you convert that to housing? You know what, Jamil? Um, <laughs> you're hitting the nail on the head again and again and again. That's you. We With this, this is where if you scrape something and you start over and it's C2 commercially zoned land, you can build this. But what so, if we just want to convert C2 commercial office into this? Can we do that? It, again, it, it's all worth a try. And again, going back to the whole oh, heart behind this. This is a big deal. This is, huge for this is a big deal. I think, I think I'm going to do a search tomorrow for C2 commercial. Yeah, I think commercial that's, un, that's, that's not unoccupied. unoccupied. Jamil, you're, you're, right you're hitting, and this is why I'm so thankful for you and your expertise and your heart and your professionalism and your creativity, because this is exactly what I think this is going to take to not only help this penetrate in the Phoenix metro area, but across the country. Yep. So so that's, so we, we do that. Now, just real quick to wrap up, there's 13, 13 success factors location, no HOA, this plenty of parking. This is answer Dennis's question. Like, this is what you look for, right? Yes. This is kind of the buy box. You make improvements. So screenshot, I'm Screenshot, people. Screenshot. I'm typically looking, and again, this whole presentation, I'll send it to anybody who wants it on, in a PDF, but basically we don't put it in a fireplace, a garbage disposal, no dishwashers. We're trying to find houses that have already had improvements. 
that you're not, you're basically dropping in walls. Okay. Again, this is the acquisition model. That's what I specialize in, but we'll do everything. If, if, and so each room is, it's actually eight by 10, but these 12 and number 13 is key is a capable property management company is so, so uh, important. Uh, Pat Split actually owns a property management company in the Southeast in Florida. It's called Two Keys that they have in house. They do a great job. I recommended Provident Partners Patty because that's been who has managed my houses for all of these years and they do a great job. Um, <clears throat> last and that's part of the package too at the end of the day, right? Like that's right. part of the turnkey package that you offer when they work with you. Exactly. And so I get, again, I just want to wrap up here, but I wanted to just. This is a, a, a bit of an eye chart, but just very quickly, 20% down on about a call a call of $345,000 purchase, 7.5% interest, about 30% is the cost. So you want to take about 30%, 15% for pad split, it's actually a little less, 8% property management, 7% overhead. So if you calculate your, your cost, call it 30%. Uh, call it eight rooms at an average of 235 a week. And I'm knowing going fast. And this is where I want to put out to everybody. I do this all day long. I would spend one-on-one -on -one time with you explaining this. We can go through this on a per house basis. We go out and figure out what the construction costs are going to be. You want a one, two, three, four, five year pro forma. We'll do it. Uh, the net net here is that about $48,000. And you look at about $3,800 a month cash on cash return. So if you take 45,000, Divide that into your into your amount that you put down, which is sixty nine thousand. That's about thirty five percent. Now, that's assuming one hundred percent occupancy. I say that the the normal number, and that's year one, right? The normal numbers are probably somewhere between twenty and twenty five percent net cash flow. And then if you add on the total return on invested cash, you're adding on your depreciation, you're adding on your tax savings. It's going to come into a nice package at tax time of somewhere between 25 and 30% cash on cash return. Got to work with your CPA and all that. And with wow. that, wow. how do we do? Alan, look, we've had people in the comments say, God bless this man. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. Like there's, there's people in the comments that are saying that you're doing God's work. God bless you. Uh, you're not, you're, you're not doing something small, brother. You are doing something that's meaningful to, not only uh, people in the real estate investing space, but it's that, that stable, are looking it's for stability. That are looking for that you know returns. Yeah, you're doing something for human beings out there that are dealing with a really insurmountable situation with housing right now. Yeah, it's yeah. important. It's important, and and this conversation is important. And so, uh, you know, from Dina and I, yeah, uh, thank you. we're really grateful to you, brother. We're really grateful that you brought this opportunity to our uh, community here. Would love to find out how can we work with you more? How do people get a hold of you? What are your what are your stats? So on the on the last page there, and again, I'll send it and we can post that link. Yeah. So that link on there will come to me. It'll come to Ellis anywhere in the country. And we'll one by one talk to people. Uh, under your under your uh, under your purview your auspices, Jamil. Listen, we'll I, 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 they're they're going to come right to you. So what, what's yeah. your phone number? Give me your phone number, bro. Like my this, number like, my number is six zero two. Let me go back to the screen. Can people see the screen? No, no, no. We're good. We're no one's screen. Oh, okay. okay. So my hard. number is six zero two four two one 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 zero one. My email address is Alan Davis at lovehomebright.com. And um, I'm available 24-7, 365. When he's not on the pickleball court. <laughs> I'm, I'm a broker. And as I say, I'm glad to be alive. Because I was, you know, I, I just every day I think, oh, my gosh, I, what? <laughs> this is crazy. But now this has really fueled a purpose that I had before. And to be able to collaborate with you, with you both, and to have people be inspired by this. Because this is going to take heart. It's going to take hard work. Yeah. It's going to take imagination. It's going to take going outside the box, which I, from what I see, I don't know of anybody who goes outside the box more than you, Jamil. I do. Really? My <laughs> I do my best. But Alan, you got a, you got a wife and kids, you know? bro? I do. I've got a 30-year-old, a 29-year-old daughter in Nashville, a 24-year-old daughter in Chicago, 
And then my son, Reed, uh, is here in, in uh, Phoenix. And if anybody wants to see a, a rock and roll show tonight, his band is playing at the Nile. That's what one of the things I'm going to be doing at 730. He's a, a drummer. Guy. He's like a John Bonham Jr. The reason I ask but I'm is a proud kid, your kids should be proud of you, brother, and your wife your wife should also be very grateful to have you as a man in their home. So thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for what you brought today. This was phenomenal. You, you, you lit us up. You, yeah. you gave people a lot to think about and we love you, bro. Yeah, absolutely. And I've had a few people put in the comments, how do I get the NOD list? So guys, you know, you can always reach out to title talk at FNF.com for any of the data related questions. If you are stuck on something and need a strategy or you need to get connected on the escrow side, uh, we are happy to help if you email title talk at FNF.com. My man. Alan Thank Davis, you. What a guy. Thank you guys. Absolutely. Really appreciate you both. Mm -hmm. Thank you Have guys for coming to Title Talk. And yes. We'll see you. Two weeks. And guess what weeks. we're going to be talking about? What is that? Another new topic for Title Talk. Oh, maybe then. We'll see you yeah. guys. Yeah, 1031s. Peace. <laughs>